Sanchez with the CCU. Let's uh, move along to Gigo now. Mayor Rudy. Hello. Mayor Rudy. Hello. Yes, Mayor Rudy. It's Chris and Sabrina. Good morning. Hi, Mayor. Mayor. This is Dave. Chris. Oh, Dave. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. Hey, even better. Okay, I'll get Mayor Rudy on. <laughs> on after Dave from Department of Labor. Dave, we got ten minutes. I want to give you the floor. What's the latest that you can tell us on uh, the PUA and the FPUC uh, programs, and how closer, how much closer we are to implementing them on Guam? Well, what we are is most of the back end work is 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 moving along very well. The software, we uh, are um, talking with them on you know every other day trying to tweak and get that uh, whole thing squared away so that the online process of receiving applications uh, w will be able to be able to stand up and, and get that going. That's going to be the critical piece of the whole PUA program is this software. And uh, as I told you before, a lot of states are finding out and I've been recommending the vendor to many states because they're not able to put together this PUA program because of the complexity and it differ from the UI program that they already have. So we're making good progress with that. I think, in, you know, within the next week or so, I might be able to come up with some timelines. Uh, if I can get a few more deliverables from USDOL and the software, I, I will feel comfortable with a, being able to get, put some timelines out there. We're getting ready to sign some MOUs for um, getting the centers put together to receive call-ins, uh, in-house applications, and uh, in-person application centers. And uh, we are working six days a week, uh, you know, 12 to 16 hours a day trying to get everything together. And I'm starting to feel a little bit like I can see a light at the end of the tunnel down the road. And uh, I'm, you know, getting a little uh, anxious so I can get this program up and running for the island. It is a hugely complicated process. I mean, the U.S. DOL lady that I spoke with yesterday that we were getting some guidance, they gave us a six-page implementation plan that we have to write up. I was just like, whoa, this is hugely complicated, but we're working on it. Uh, she said, you know, Dave, you guys are trying to put together a 80-year program in a couple months. He goes, it's, you know, it's daunting and complicated, but, you know, we'll help you get through this. I mean, we're almost adding a, a mini UI program, and uh, this is not something that is done during a, uh, pandemic or disaster but we're doing it and we're doing it as, as, as well as we can and um, we aren't the only ones in the boat they're having huge problems in the states putting together this program too which is not comforting for the island but it's just if you read about it there's only one state uh, Washington that's up and running and a couple more that might be up and running later this week and that's about it uh they're still trying to stand this thing up so uh we're we're not so far behind i think we're we're running ahead of usdol and uh getting things planned and putting things together and i think uh uh you know i'm hoping to get the final touches on the employer module we keep changing it and making trying to make it simplified and uh and trying to make it uh, so that it is uh, usable for us with the information and not only for the employees that are being put in by the employers, but if they aren't rehired and they move over to the higher Guam piece where they need to get jobs, training, or education, the information will transfer over seamlessly. So um, good progress. And... Uh, and we hope that I can get you some more information in, in, within the end of the week or something. Right. But, Dave, I mean, just for all intents and purposes, uh, the governor put out that timeline of, of weeks. So we're, we're still looking at And I know you've been, you know, trying to trying to uh, try to be really responsible about not putting out a timeline. But, um, you know, I think the governor well, showed your hand a little bit there. 
Well, the, the timeline that she was talking about is my application. Okay. And, and I, I'm, I, I'm hoping that I can get a, an application out that will at least give the people an idea of, of the information and the structure and how to start organizing what's going to be needed. And that I'm trying to um, get finalized, receive it, and get it out to the public so that they can have something to start working. That's what I'm uh, uh, shooting for, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get that done before the governor's timeline, uh, if, if we can just get that finalized and get that released. So that I'm hoping for is true. And then the online should be uh, ready, uh, hopefully within a couple of weeks. And then we can start accepting online applications. Right. So, uh, you know, until I get a better feel for it, but I think we are still good looking at kind of that timeline, you know, middle of May-ish, hopefully that uh, they can have those things uh, ready. We still have to uh, get a huge amount of people trained on that system so that we, they can uh, put in applications or put in the, the stuff and stand up the call centers and the application centers. So everything is kind of going to fall around that period of time, the middle, the end of May. And, uh, and I think the online can be turned on faster than, of course, the walk-in applications. Uh, we have to make sure that we have those uh, mechanisms of the six feet shelter in place all worked out. We can't have a huge crowd coming. And, right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the piece of the puzzle that we're trying to get control over. Yeah. And, and so we, Dave, sure we had a couple of comments. Sorry to interrupt, but just a sure. couple of comments here. Uh, this is something we kind of talked about with you about a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. People who have had their hours cut. Uh, the question here: Is it true that people with cut hours are not qualified? Uh, no. It, 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 that's open. It, this is the complication part of it. There's a PUA amount. Remember the 345? Right. That is the dollar amount that if you have reduced hours and you are below 345 weekly, then you still qualify. Okay? So how it works is in the regulations, it says you must make at least $1 of the PUA to qualify also for the FPUC, which is a 600. So if you're making 340 hours, uh, dollars a week in reduced hours, then you qualify for $5 of the PUA amount and you get the $600 also. If your reduced hours is 346, then you don't qualify. I hope that kind of gives you an understanding so you have to in your reduced hours your weekly income has to be below three hundred and forty five dollars to qualify for assistance right yeah I, I mean I know we had discussed this before Dave but uh, I, I got people process the information and then they need to reprocess it because circumstances yeah, no change. Problem. do you yeah. automatically uh, um, are you automatically eligible for the F puck if you are uh, approved for PUA? For you the are for okay. during the months of April uh, through the end of July. That's the period for the FPOC. So, yes, if okay. you get the PUA during that period of time, whether it's the full amount or a dollar, you get the full 600. Okay, so no matter no matter what, that 600 doesn't no change. No matter what. Right. That yeah. is a separate program. These are okay. two separate programs, and the PUA. Uh, and the FPUC goes as an addition to the PUA. So okay. that's why you have to have at least $1 of the PUA mm -hmm. to get the FPUC or the $600. Okay, Dave. Well, okay. We, we ran out of time, Yeah. Um, but oh, we sure. certainly thank you for uh, yeah, the information. Thank you. So much, Dave. Thank you. Okay. Uh, God bless and, uh, you. I'm going to include you in my prayers again. Honestly, it's been a couple nights, but I forgot to include you. Sorry, I'm going to include you again tonight, Dave. Thank you. I appreciate the prayers and you know that you'll be guided by the lord's light and you know he shine your path so you can see thanks 
Okay. I appreciate it. You got it, Dave. Be safe. Thank Be you. Safe. Wash your hands. Bye. Okay. okay. Bye. I might even throw a little bit of wand in. <laughs> I, uh, so we're flicked over now. Welcome. Good morning. We're on KUAM uh, TV 11. It is the KUAM News Takeover of Guam's favorite I-94. There are just so many ways to catch the show. Of uh, course, right here on 93.9 FM. We're also streaming KUAM.com, the KUAM News app. There's an audio stream of Docomo Channel 10. And we're again on KUAM TV 11. We do that 8 to 10 o'clock in the morning, the last half of the show. And last but definitely not least, thank you so much to our KUAM News Facebook Live viewers. All right, we're going to take a little break. Uh, come back and uh, we'll play our anthems and do a deep dive into the day's COVID-19 news. It's 